I'm back with another gameplay video playing Domain Zoo again. Uh, we just had the recent ban announcement of um, Fury as well as Up the Beanstalk. So uh, this is the list I'm go I'm going to be testing out going forward. Uh, I actually think Fury... Uh, so Up the Beanstalk didn't really affect us all that much. Like those, I think actually those uh, Cascade Bean matchups were a bit easier than the typical Omnath build. Um, Omnath has never been a favorable matchup. It's it's really never going to be a favorable matchup for the Zoo decks. Um, but you you know you have some tools that you can try to play against that. But um, the thing that was uh, very good against us was of course Scam Fury. So you know um, we'd play a few creatures and they it could you know our opponent could easily deal with like a Kavu and an Akadal with a Scam Fury and that was just like such a blowout. So I think that might help Zoo a little bit. But we weren't a deck that was totally vulnerable to Fury because it was generally hard to get the two for one. There were times where, like you have a Brawler and Ragavan on board and like your opponent you know can take out both of them, but uh, most of the time, it was like you have like Nakadal plus Brawler, and then your opponent's Fury can kill one of them, but it can't kill both. So, you know, we didn't worry that much about Fury. Um, but I am back to Preordain just because uh, I, I like that even before the ban announcement. Um, I think just that, you know, but Beanstalk's gone now, so it's even less reason to play Bowmaster. But I just like Preordain into what I think are the top decks, which are uh, things like uh, Rhinos, um, you got like Cascade, things even like Amulet Titan, like stuff like that, where that there's Bowmaster is just so dead. So at least like Preordain can dig for an answer or something um, in game one. Uh, the rest of the list is pretty stock. I still like Fornish over Brawler. I just like that for the consistency. I know some people will trim on it, one to trim on one or, one or two, and I think you can do that. It's fine. I just, I want to be maximum consistent. Like sometimes you lose with this deck because you run out of threats or you like don't have threats in your opener and then you have to mulligan. So this just reduces the chance of that happening. Uh, as well, like Preordain obviously can help you dig for action. And then um, in the sideboard, the big change is because of Fury being banned, my expectation that scams gonna fall off a lot. I've moved back to two reprieve. I think reprieve's very good against uh, any kind of combo deck. So Cascade, Amulet Titan, it's good against Yawgmoth, things like that. So that's why I'm I'm happy to be back to two. There could be a world where maybe one or two of these is in the main deck. Uh, maybe instead of Preordain, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But I, I like two in the sideboard for now. I'm back on two Chain to the Rocks. I think Murktide might see a little bit of a comeback. And then, um, you know, it's good against Yawgmoth um it can be okay against rhinos it, it, it's good against a lot of maybe creature decks that people are going to try to bring back right now and then i'm back on two rest in peace again i think there will be a lot of graveyard decks because dothy was really holding down um, a lot of graveyard strategies and with scam you know there's probably gonna be less scam or no scam or whatever the new scam build is uh i think that you know you're gonna want more graveyard hate because graveyard strategies are gonna come out and then two fluster storm cascade still pretty much unchanged and then natural state again i'm amulet titan um Hammer Time, Hardened and Scales, things like that. You want Natural State. Kind of similar to Terra Sunder, but Terra Sunder is also versatile and can come in against like uh, decks that are bringing in Blood Moon, can come in against Ring decks, things like that. And then I've got two hit at Sugu Consumes All. That's going to be against any like creature strategies or, um, you know, Hardened Scales, Hammer Time, things like that. So this is the 75 I'm going for today. Uh, we'll be playing through a four round preliminary on MTGO. And I think it's about to get started here any moment enjoy this kind of content you can subscribe and let's get started here we did win the die roll it's always the key winning in magic i just need to select my companion which is also the key okay uh i think the sand's keepable it's not amazing but uh it's keepable. i would like the only thing i make it better is a one drop especially on the play it's nice to apply that early pressure but that's okay we'll just go flood strand turn one and then zag off triumph uh we could potentially get a breeding pool to stub something if there's something that's worth stubbing on turn one it's pretty rare there is but it could be something like a Hardened Scales or an Amulet, then I will stub that. Or even uh, maybe something from Hammer Time. Uh, my opponent also has seven cards in hand. Okay, plays Besager, probably Rhinos. Okay, plays Grazer. Fine. Not Rhinos, obviously. But we're against Amulet Titan, so it means he probably does not have an Amulet in hand. And he didn't play a Saga, so um, he might have a kind of clunky hand. He did keep seven, though, so maybe he's... We'll see what he does here. Play Bounce Land. Go, and then maybe he's going to play the Amulet next turn. Maybe he is hmm, playing around something. Bell Pierce or something. Okay, he plays Saga. Okay, that makes more sense now. So now that's how he's going to get his amulet. Fortunately, we can't destroy Saga and we can't stub the amulet there. So, um, not a hand, a hand that lines up pretty well against ours. Let's get Zagoth Trium. Uh, okay, so there's debate whether I want to get play Kavu or Brawler. Kavu's nice because the looting effect. Uh, we do already have binding and stub, but we could like loot away stub. Um, Ragavan's obviously useless. Um, we could also just play Brawler with the idea that you can like push through two extra damage. Um, I think we're still gonna keep stuff for pack. I think I might just play Brawler. Normally I wouldn't do this. Like obviously I draw Scion, I get a little public punish, but like my hand's good, so I don't think I need to loot. And I'll at least push through the extra damage if he tries to chump with Grazer, which he almost certainly will. Again, we don't have any way to deal with the saga. So what we're gonna have to do, okay, he's got second saga. So it's gonna be 
tough for us to deal with with this hand. And he has Dryad. Jesus. Okay. Um, attack first. Now we're kind of regretting not playing around. God, we guess we could have looted away one of these lands. So I think the issue is if I take Dryad, like, I don't think I can... Let me think for a second. I don't think I can take Dryad, right? So next turn, he can go Amulet. He'll play a land. In response to the land trigger, I'll, I'll trigger, I'll bind the Amulet. Uh, so he'll have two, three. You won't have enough land to do anything. Oh, he'll still have one more land. Hmm. I think I have to bind the Amulet, right? No reason to shock in to play this. I just play Basic Forest. Although this can get me some, give me more mana flexibility. So I think we'll keep it. I don't think my lift all matters that much here. Oh, that was actually a huge punt. I needed to play. I can't now. Okay. All right. Well, that, that, that was really bad. So I, I don't know what I was thinking. It's just like I just woke up. So I needed, I can't double spell Kabu. I needed to play the Foothills so that I could play Kabu and then hold up Stub or Binding. That was so bad, actually. I might have just lost the game on that. Now, what do I do? Find the Dryad. He'll still go Titan. Uh, That was so bad. I mean, he, he might just kill me next turn. Hey, if he has a pact, I can stub it and hang on from there. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that pun. Like, literally first game, of course. Although, my, my I, I think it's going to be hard to beat my opponent's draw anyway Uh, with, like, my hand. I mean, it's turn three. He might have the win. He, as long as he doesn't have Titan in hand, but he kept seven, so he probably does. So I can bind the Titan next turn. He might just kill me this turn. There's one. Yeah, it'd be so nice if I had binding up right now. He goes packed. I mean, maybe this is just a bait, but I don't think so. He doesn't have Titan. He could just have a second pact. Okay. So had the one ring anyway. Uh, I don't really know how I beat this. He's gonna have a two amulets plus the one ring, so I guess I have to take the one ring. Just hope he keeps breaking. Blue away land. Yeah, that was really bad. Well, last turn I don't know. I could have taken the amulet, I guess, in response to the first trigger. He might still pact though anyway. But then I could have had the pact up this turn. I don't know. We're not in a good position for obvious reasons. <laughs> Get another brawler. Yeah, not the worst. So I think we just have to bind the one ring and then hope he literally has nothing because um he's like drawing for stuff. He could start making saga tokens. He also just have Besaju. Oh, he does have Besaju because he played it on turn one. Um, okay. So he Besaju's my binding just to get the ring back. Uh so that's not an amazing play. Um hmm. I guess I have to let the ring live. I mean he's just gonna hold on to the Besaju forever. Hmm. Do I want to keep this Ragavan to loot? Probably. It's not gonna ever well. Uh, maybe there's a world where it could connect now nah, because he's not going to block with Dryad. Let's think of how I don't die here. I think I just need to save it for like Titan. I think that's going to be my move. Could burn me out with Dryad. Is it better to loot away this Ragavan or just play it? Plays it. He probably blocks. It'll at least force him to not be able to block one of these. If Rag I mean, he'll just let Ragavan connect though. I guess it doesn't matter. I think I'll play it. Okay. Again, I could bind it, but he has Besaju in hand. We know about that. And he just gets the ring back with one last counter on it. Um, it's not amazing. I guess he gets to draw one less card. Um, maybe, maybe I did this wrong. Maybe I should have still bound it because like he would have had one less card to draw. But now I think I have to just wait for Titan and try to win, like catching him off guard. I think we're past the point of being able to do anything else. Yes, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that line. Maybe, maybe that wasn't right. But now I think I just have to hope and pray. Like I could have taken the one ring. He besages it at the end of his turn, gets it back, draws another card, and then I like lose. So maybe I can at least bind a Titan. And then attack him for a million and or he'll just play radiant fountain and gain some life so that's gonna make my strategy harder now perhaps not impossible though maybe i shouldn't have played that ragavan just kept it to loot okay it's just gonna keep chaining along one rings kind of annoying i think i should maybe try to bind this one ring taps it oh he clicked the wrong one oh, i guess he just wanted to cast it okay so i guess he has protection now regardless hmm. um i feel like i want a second red source and white source okay so we're gonna attack to loot away the flood strand Did we find bolt useful at all right now shouldn't block it yeah. okay um think for a moment here so if we uh, maybe we should attack with ragman too actually i mean he could have could have baited him into killing his dryad yeah we should have he probably would just rock with grazer though realistically okay um so we know he can have like unlimited mana do we just attack the one ring and then hope that he keeps breaking i think we have to do that but he doesn't have mana currently to copy it oh yeah it's non-legendary non-token artifact right he isn't I mean, he, obviously he can besage me and get it back, uh, but well, I'll just be able to draw one card then. I think it's the correct line. I see he just draws Titan, he draws Titan, or he had it the whole time, but yeah, I figured that. Another blue source. Um, yeah, so we just have to hope he keeps breaking. It's not a great strategy, but I think the best one to win here. Okay, but he has nothing. Dude, what? Yeah, so he has nothing. And start chomping. Uh, I don't think it's worth bolting anything right now. It'd be worth uh, looting away this Nakano. Might be to try to find a binding for the ring or something. Dub or something. 
Okay, another cobble is fine. I think it's better to kill Dryad than Bolt Grazer here. Maybe I'm wrong though. Is that nine? Can we hang on? Almost certainly no. <laughs> Is that eight? All right, well, now he's gonna draw one card. At some point, he's gonna hit a Titan and then I'm gonna die. No, we tried. Or he's gonna copy this. I don't know what happens. If, it, if it's a legendary copy of a token, I don't really know what happens. I've never seen this before. Plays Saga. Plays Titan. I lose. Not looking good for me. Plays Colossus, which is not Titan. I right, yield to his turn. A million mana, but do you have anything to do with it? Copy his ring. Oh, bounce to Larry or West, transmute to Larry or West. I guess that's it then, right? There's some blue mana for it. Oh, he's got one. Oh, now he's got two because he has two amulets. Okay, I think that's game, right? Because he can just transmute into Titan. I think he got me. I mean, we were kind of playing on borrowed time anyway. I'm trying to think if, like, obviously that sequence was bad where I, like, didn't hold up binding, but it's like, what would I have found? I guess, like, he had Besaju in hand. I guess I could have binded the ring and stopped him from drawing more cards. Maybe that was still, that would have been the correct play. It didn't bounce to Larry or West. Does he just have Titan in hand? Am I going to get on the return out of this? I don't think so, right? Didn't. Oh, he has one, he had one more land drop, so now he can bounce to Larry or West. I mean, I think I'm fine with how I played this, except for that one thing, but I don't know if it would made him... I mean, he just, like, chained along one rings, and, like, you, <laughs> you know, this is just kind of pre-board. It's hard to win against Titan. He did brick a lot, so that was the only thing that kept him in it, but maybe I'm wrong. You put in the comments if you think there was a better line I could have taken. Again, I think maybe only though I should have bound the one ring. Like, obviously, I fucked up that land drop, so... But I don't know that that would have made that much of a difference, because he had Beseju, plus he had another ring anyway. So it would have, like, stopped him from drawing one card for one turn. So maybe that would have been worth it. Or sorry, it would stop. It would have like basically time walked him, but that still probably wasn't enough to win. Okay, so against Amulet, we're gonna bring Terra Sunder, Natural State, Natural State, Reprieve, six cards, and let's take a look. This is like a rough sideboard guide. I'm I'm still kind of working on refining it because of uh, this is still had um, Celestial Purge on it, so it's not gonna be quite correct. But uh, let's see what I usually cut against Amulet. One stub, two bolt, two Ragavan. One stub, uh, stub, two bolt, Ragavan. And it said one tribal flames. I guess Prudin lets me dig for more answers. Maybe it's good. I'm just depends on the hand he has, but since that's like it's such an unfair matchup that I, I think I need the you know, it's basically giving me more copies of my sideboard answers. I don't think there's anything else I want to put in. You could argue for Hitatsugu, but my problem with Hitatsugu is like the only time it's really good is to if my opponent has like multiple amulets on board, but then like they usually win the game when they have that. So it's like, you know, are you or you know, they could go wide with saga tokens, but that's like pretty rare. That's like their plan B. So I haven't found Hit to be like especially amazing. Like you can pay three mana, kill one Saga token or one uh, amulet, and you're kind of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess they have Grazer too, but I don't think it's amazing. Hey, this hand's awkward. I, I think I need to keep it because that's double binding. But like, obviously, if I needed this to be a fetch land, this hand would have been very good because I could play Nakadal plus Nakadal, but now I can't. So now we just have to go Zagoth Triome and then turn two, we can go Nakadal plus binding. If he goes turn one amulet, that's going to be the game plan. Uh, let's see how many he kept. He kept six. He kept six. Okay, so he doesn't have amulet. But again, this is like the annoying thing about Saga. It's like, oh, he does have amulet too. Okay, that's fine. We have answers. We have answers. It's okay. Okay, start out with our Nakadal. Uh, he could have Force of Vigor, so I'm going to upkeep this. He might just have Bounce Lands in hand. We'll find out. Okay, he does not. He, have, he has the Gardens to play another amulet. Oh, Grazer too. Hands good. Back. Expected. Um... Again, Force of Vigor. Do I bother playing around at this point, or do I just get like Sion on board? I just get Sion on board. If he has it, he has it. I'm kind of showing what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so I think he'll be able to get it, and then like have, have mana to copy it. Not bad for me, right? Maybe he gets greedy. Lots of mana. Yeah. I mean, I doubt he's just gonna go to copy it. That'd be really stupid here. Okay. Mm, that's handy. We don't have double green. Kind of annoying. We'll live with it. He uh, could have besage you. I think it's unlikely he's besage you. So we could go for it all now. What's the downside there? Like he played, I feel like if he had a bounce, he have had a bounce land in hand, he would have played it by now. But am I just giving him time to like get bounce land, like ramp man, like put this back to hand, like ramp mana, you know, transmute to Larrier West, do all kinds of crazy shit. Maybe we pass. I don't know. Maybe I should have just kill, just kill it now, and he has nothing. So he's away from to commit to something. Now we go for it. Oh, actually, that was stupid. I should have let the Amico Synth Garden become a cop. No, it was a punt too. Well, I really am punting it up today. I should just let it make become a copy and then natural state it. I guess it's fine now. Got bailed out by our draws. That was bad. Okay, hopefully we still win though. That was really bad. Is he could have just made the copy and then I would have I would have Mika. Yeah, that was so that was a huge punt. He would have had one last land too. Please besiege you. I mean green mana. He won't natural state that as well. Or uh that was so bad by me. Hopefully it doesn't matter. But it probably will. It might. Oh no. He's doing something. Okay. Okay. Oh, he's just trying to cycle spelunking. Oh my god, I played this so sloppy. What an idiot. What an idiot I am. 
Yeah, we got there anyway, but whew, that was bad. All right, all right, we got bailed out. We're okay, we're okay. Obviously hard to do that on the draw, but we also saw, you know, two natural states difference in this matchup, perhaps. Oh, and two bindings. Yeah, that's the difference. I, I found, like, basically this matchup comes down to, like, do you see binding? Do you see, like, your cyborg cards? Then you win. Do you not? Uh, you know, most of the time. Sometimes, obviously, your opponent just has it. Okay. Uh, This is rough, but I think I keep this. I can go natural state turn one, like, preordain turn two or something. Whatever he plays turn one. I don't draw a land. I have two draws and a land plus preordain. I think this is fine to keep. Right, this will be fun then. Best of luck, sir. Best of luck. Okay, that's good. I don't know if there's reason to suck keep or not, but I'm doing it. Just jam a brawler here. I'm going to play a Valakut. They keep a seven, but I'm guessing it's a clunky seven after I destroyed their saga. Let's see, maybe they have dismember. I don't draw a land. I could try to high roll and preordain here, but I don't think that's smart. Let's see if he has dismember. It says Grazer. Okay, Grazer's not that scary. Bounce something to hand. I mean, he's ramping, but we just play a second brawler unless he also has dismember here. Doesn't seem to land. All right, Ragaman. Uh, we dash Ragavan. He, no, it's not useful. Uh, I think we're just going to play a second brawler here. We'll save our preordain. You know, we still have threats to play. We'll probably preordain this turn if we don't find it. If we don't get another land, though. Three mana, great. Or, uh, Dryad. Blinking. He has the cave. He does not. But he gets to ramp, kind of. And he cycles. Did something. He did something here. Three mana. Three mana. Three mana. Dryad. Okay. I mean, he's going to see if he starts chomping. Okay, there's a land. My thing's a 5 3. I think we will do that. Um, play land back first. And then we have to decide if we want to try preordain into something like useful or uh, what we want to do here. Mm, we're going to preordain here. Try to find a binding or something because he can go two, four. He can go Titan next turn. So I think we need to do something about that. Okay, just how we drew it up. Just how we drew it up. All right, so we'll get a Titan down, but I don't think he can kill me. Could be wrong. Titan plus Dryad. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I'm only at 12. I don't know. Maybe I'm an idiot. <laughs> so a good sign that he's not... Oh, he's at Spelunking, so he basically has an amulet. Yeah, I didn't have a way to deal with it. I mean, I assume he just goes Titan here. I don't think he can kill me, but I could be wrong. He already has a Valkut in play. Like, he might be able to just Valkut me out. He doesn't control enough lands yet, though. Losses, okay. Oh, but with Valkut in play, that might be the end of it then. Turn five. Damn, brutal. Just brutal. Right, because he gets a Valkut trigger every time he does Colossus. Is that not right? No, he doesn't have enough lands yet. Okay, now it's over. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, I think he can just play a million lands. He doesn't have them. I don't know. Now there's two more triggers, three triggers now, four triggers now. That's the game. Yeah, I mean, that's game. Um, again, I think I'm fine with my lines. I preordained when I had the chance to. Um, I, I don't know. It's turn five. He's dead next turn. Uh, I destroyed his first <laughs> amulet, uh, you know, his first saga. And I just didn't. I tried to preordain into binding, into natural state, into kind of anything. Uh, Terra Sunder would have done it, um, right? Wait, where did the Valkut triggers go? I thought you had four of them, but not, right? Oh, you just had natural removal Titan. There's the two other triggers. Yeah. <laughs> what, like, what? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I've lost the Titan so much recently. It's just been kind of pressure. It's always been like this. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? I disrupt them. I apply pressure. I still lose. So, um, you know, put in the comments what you think I should have done differently. Uh, I don't. I think I really had any other options this game. Um, game one, again, same kind of thing. Game two, I had that slight misplay, so that's on me for sure. I still, well, I still won game two, but like, what, like, what am I, what am I supposed to do here? What, what do I do with this? Like, what the fuck? All right, well, I'll see you guys for round two. Okay, I am back for round two. Um, yeah, we had a tough loss to Amulet round one. I think you know that game one, maybe that's I, I did have that misplay playing the wrong land, so you know maybe that was the factor that really. Like if I had been able to play fetch the right land, get a play a Kavu and then bind the ring, then, you know, that could have swung the game because it would have he drew like two extra cards from being able to do that. So I think that, you know, I'll, I'll accept that. Maybe, maybe I punted that away, although it was like very close if that was even the right play at that point. But I think I'm supposed to play to the board. OK, so I think this is a, you're on the draw. But yeah, I think, you know, I think that was, you know, at that point, I had to play to the board, assume he had been showing nothing in hand, so I just had to stop him from drawing more cards. Catcher, try and pass. Probably Rhinos? Uh, maybe? I don't know. These games are all really close, and uh, do I need to play this Triumph? I think I could. I can play my Kavu as a five. Oh, there's no Fury in the format anymore. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just going to ice my land, so I guess that could have been a reason not to play it, but nah, I don't know. Because ice sure does. Um, but I think I still would have cracked the fetch anyway. You could, I could have played around ice, played a 4 4 Kavu. In hindsight, that would have looked smart. Um, yeah. Okay. I think with this hand, maybe I, maybe I should have just done that. That was on me. Because 
Um, because I only have a two drop, so I should have played around ice. Yeah, I'm not playing well today. It's not strong playing by me. I didn't think to play around ice. I mean, I saw Catch Your Triome, and it could have been a lot of the decks, but that should have just known it's Rhinos. He's just gonna jam. Okay. I want to fetch shock to play binding. Or do I want to not lose life total? I think I do want to play binding in case he has force. I'm in a pretty good spot if it could also have subtlety. Be bad for me. Them's is the bends. We have steam vents here. Hmm. What are we gonna do this? I go like red, green, the kabu. Get ready for it to die to tide binder. Subtlety? Probably subtlety. No subtlety. Uh okay. Land. I don't think he's gonna go blood wound with this mana base. I guess he could. Um and it could Makes sense too. I think we just bluff that we have something. We have the basic planes if he goes Blood Moon. Okay, now what do we do, right? I attack, he goes Tide Binder. I think I just try to travel flames this Rhino. Obviously, he can have, um, he could just hard cast Dispute. Can't pay two mana for that. But I guess it's bad if he just a travel flames a Rhino. I could also try to burn him out. I go to nine. I have 11 points of burn damage. I want to attack and loot something, but if he has Tide Binder, it's really bad. So I think we travel flames could still have Tide Binder. I think I have to accept that i don't really want to discard any of these cards but i think we'll discard breeding pool right because like what am i gonna do like play around tie binder forever if he goes outburst it's bad but i can bolt one of the rhinos so it's not that bad i, I whatever he's got tie binder he's got it. i don't think i can play around it at this point Let's see go ahead kill him kill my kavu yep, here we go here we go again i couldn't well if it goes outburst i'm actually in good shape yeah i mean what, what like do i just never attack forever and he goes rhinos again and then i lose mm, maybe that was better though I mean, he was, it was obviously what he had, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe that wasn't a winning line, but like, what am I going to do? Just hold it up forever. I guess I could have gone one more turn and played around it. Hmm. I, I don't know. Did I make a mistake there? He could have had an outburst and tide binder and just be holding up and see what to do. I currently have nothing. I also has nothing though. Well, they could have outburst actually. Just be trying to play around stub this whole time. Yeah. Now we're in trouble, huh? So it forced to, no, he doesn't. Hmm. I don't know. I guess I could have just kept Kabu on defense that whole game, but I don't know if that's a winning line either. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked there. He he would have just played outburst though, and then I'm not like in that much of a better spot. I'm just like, you know what I mean? So he he had both. If he has another outburst, then good on him. If he goes for it. Um mm, I think we'll just keep the I mean, I'm dead to like Odawara. I'm dead to like subtlety. I'm dead to so many things. <laughs> I'm dead to dispute, I think. Wait, I'm already dead. Never mind. That was stupid. So how would I have not been dead? I don't know. Okay, well, I think that was, I don't know, it's really close. Like, I guess if I don't attack with Tide Miner, he plays the Rhinos, I'm still in an okay spot, but he can just hold up Tide Miner forever, I can never attack. But maybe I'm just supposed to just put Rhinos on defense, and, come on, dude. Uh, I guess maybe Kava just has to play defense in this matchup, but I'm not really applying pressure doing that. But maybe, maybe that's what it is now, with Tide Binder. I mean, I forced him to have exactly that, and he had exactly that. But he also had Outburst. He also had, like, two Cascade, you know? I don't know, maybe I played that wrong. Like, usually you're supposed to play around things by just... I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm going to do Chain of the Rocks. It's always kind of mid here. Maybe on the draw I will. Uh, let me see what I usually sideboard for this. Um, hmm. Oh, I guess I don't bring in Terra Sunder anymore. Or something like this. I debate Terra Sunder. I mean, he could be on Blood Moon, but he's playing Triome, so, like, who knows? I have Binding. I'll live with it. Deep. No Fury. Obviously, you can have Dead Gone and stuff, but I'll live with it. Mm. I don't know. That was really close. I think now I'm having regrets because like I got punished for that line. But I think my thought process was if I don't attack, he just plays rhinos and just like can ram into me, or he can gone He had gone in hand too, so he can just go on the cobby the following turn, swing for ten. So I think it was like lose lose no matter what. I think him. It's more likely he has. Hmm. I guess I force him to have outburst plus dead gone instead of just having tie binder. But I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. I'm gonna get um steam vents here because. Uh, because I want to be able to get basic planes and save me some life total by having and still have five types. Plus, I I can have stub up then. If he has dead gone, no fury again, no subtlety. Oh, he doesn't have anything. Okay, good luck, sir. I don't have anything really either. Though. Oh, now I do. Attack. All right. I, uh, we might be in good shape here. I mean, we're gonna do a lot of damage. And he doesn't have dead gone. He got a fire. Um, do I fight over it? No, probably not. Okay, he actually has nothing. And okay, maybe he's dead. I'll stub it maybe with the pressure on. Yeah, now I definitely will stub it. I mean, I could not stub it, but I think the clock is probably more important. Like, I think I'll stub it, and then if he fights over it, then I'm gonna not care. Let's think for a second though. I'm gonna stub it. That nine, dial gemstone caverns, mm, past the ten. I don't think getting again that matters here. Dead next turn if he takes any damage from a land has to. <clears throat> I don't think he, I don't think it matters what I do here. 
All right, we got there. Obviously, turn one Ragman is still very good. In fact, turn one Ragman is so good. I guess on the play versus the draw, that's the difference there. Uh, I definitely keep three in. I wonder if it's almost correct to... No, three's fine, I think. Without Fury, they have a harder time dealing with it, apparently. Like, they have Dead Gone, but then they can't... It doesn't allow them to sequence like they used to. So I think there's an argument now to with how you sideboard is, like, you want to keep maybe even four Ragavans in. Usually you would cut it because of Hidetsugu, but it's also play draw dependent. Like, it's probably better on the play to have turn one Ragavan on the draw because then they can have Fire Ice or something. Um, but that was... Ragavan was huge there because it allowed me to just apply pressure and then hold up mana for uh, interaction. Although I drew well, too. So, ugh. What, do we keep a five lander, which is Ragavan turn one and then stub? I don't think we do. I think a five lander is a little too much for me. This is keepable, though. Keep. Um, both these lands are awkward. Actually, really awkward. Fuck. Because I can't get... This is so bad, actually. So I need to draw another land to try to get two types for Scion. But let's think for a second. So we'll go Savi. No, no, we'll have to go Zagoth. And then we'll be missing white. So I'm trying to think if it makes sense to do Zagoth. All right, I think we do this. Uh, I didn't realize the lands were so awkward, but I still think this is a keep. I just need another fetch land because I can't play Scion turn two right now. How do I deal? Okay, now I can. Zagoth Trium. <laughs> of course, now he can ice me, but whatever. I'll live with it. It's not icing me. So the question is, do I let him resolve the first Rhinos? Probably. I think it's better to get a Threat on board. I could argue to hold up Stub, but then he can just like hold it up for a while. I'm just going to let him get the first one, and I'll just jam, hit at Sugu, and if he has Force, he has Force. He has Subtlety right now. I can like it. put it on top if he has Subtlety. Right, we have the mana for Hit at Sugu, but he does not go Subtlety. He should have it. Mm. I could shock to just like Tribal Flames him here. Actually, isn't not, not the, mo the worst move. But then he could... Actually, I don't care if he resolves Rhino, honestly. Let me just do this. He could ice and then resolve it. And I have Hidetsugu. If he has a force, he has a force, and I'll get it out of his hand. 11. Let me save the force for, to fight over this. Okay, he did not. All right, things are looking okay. We know he has no force. We know he has no... He could still have gone. Um, again, this is actually where Fury not being here is making a big difference. Four mana. Blood Moon, maybe? Not a big deal. Unless he goes Blood Moon plus a removal spell. Oh, he's going to kill the Scion. Okay. So he's going to go with... Um, Draw two, kill Scion. Cool. We have subtlety now. Probably. Yeah, we're gonna put it. We're gonna top it. We probably wanted to hard cast that, but which is lowering revealed. He could have drawn a force negation, but I don't think he did. Almost certainly has another subtlety. I'm gonna travel flames him. Life awkward. I guess it's bad against hard cast force negation, but I mean, I think he's got another subtlety. Just not gonna do anything then. Not really. Okay. Sure. So maybe I should just jam subtlety there and force him to have it, but I just I don't know. I felt like he had it. We've just been had had Tidemire this whole time. It's kind of annoying because he can still hold up subtlety, so it's just good he had two flash threats instead of zero. Okay. We have to jam hit at Sugu here. I think it's too risky. It's annoying because he can still swing for five though, so we could very well lose this game. Hmm. How do we lose? So I can bind a rhino token. He could have force. He could have subtlety. Bind a rhino token. I'm still gonna take seven, nine, go to three. It's gonna be hard to win that way. If I play hit at Sugu, let's just let's just assume he has force. Uh I play Hit at Sugu, I'm, and he forces it, I, I lose. Um, it's, he's unlikely to have force up to this point. He hasn't used it. Let's just say I play Scion, bind, and he has force. Then um, so it's more likely to have subtlety over force. He already played a subtlety, although he hasn't shown to have force, so he would have had to draw it recently. The problem is, my problem with the Hit at Sugu line is I still take five, and I don't really get anywhere, right? Like, I can bind a Rhino and then block... Uh, you know, and then take four, six, three is nine. So I won't die even if he has... Oh, I think we go Scion plus Binding? I don't know. It's, like, really close. I, my problem with just jamming hit at Sugu is I'm still taking five every turn. This is, like, famous last words. Just has another subtlety and I lose. Which is shardless. That's good, though. I still put it on top. Maybe I'm, like, playing this wrong. But he could have Force in hand, too, as his last card. I, I don't know. If he has Fire Ice... So it's really risky to... I could try to bind Tide Binder. Right, because I'm dead. Buy time binder, take ten, and I'm still dead to shardless. Ugh, I don't know. Maybe this line wasn't good. I don't know. It's a close game. I'm I'm, I'm not sure if I played this right. I, I'm just regretting last game with attacking with Kabu. Maybe I should have just not attacked and played around time binder. But I mean, I got punched by him having second subtlety, and I played around force negation. So you know, I, brutal. We're we're dead no matter what now. Actually, so I think I sh I had to bind the tide binder right because we're at three, but it doesn't matter at this point. So Hitosu just died in hand. Yeah, we're dead no matter what. So I, I misplayed this. Fuck. So what did we have to do last turn? Like, I just, I got stuck in such an awkward position. Maybe I wasn't supposed to keep topping Scion, but I think I was. So I had to bind Tidebinder, take 10, 
And then, no, I still would have lost. Like, was it just a losing line? Like, I guess I just had to jam Hidetsugu because playing Scion plus Binding was a losing line. But Hidetsugu wasn't exactly a winning line either because you kill two Rhinos and then I still take five. But I guess that's better than killing one Rhino and taking... But I was dead to Force if he had Force. So I was trying to play around Force and I got got by Subtlety. What was it correct to play around? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I needed... I guess I misplayed. Oh, he just had another tie binder anyway. So that was another thing I would have had to play around. So I would have lost. Okay, GG. That's right. So tie binder is another thing that hurts Hidetsugu because now then he has eight answers basically or seven, however many tie binders he's playing. He's a chapter one Hidetsugu. So he might have, even if I had gone Hidetsugu, he might have, uh, okay. So that's was his other card. So I, I was, uh, so maybe I wasn't supposed to put Scion back on top and that was the mistake, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, so he had, so anyway, he had a uh, tie binder. He had a second tie binder the entire game. So no matter what I had done that turn, whether I played Scion or Binding, um, I would have lost. So, or sorry, Scion or Hidetsuka, I would have lost. So that was that was fun. Okay, I'll just talk to my opponent. He was saying he sides out Force Negation against Zoo, which kind of makes sense. I mean, I think if anything, that made my Tribal Flames game plan better because it was like, oh, look, I'm giving myself more outs. But I actually think, do I side out two Tribal Flames this matchup? Oh, I might be an idiot. No, I sat out one. Okay, so I'd have one more in the deck. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Another another really close match. Um, so I and I talked to my opponent. Like the only thing I was unsure about was attacking with Kavu. And I think my opponent was basically like, yeah, I think it was still a correct. Like he was my only threat on board. I can't just not attack with him the entire game. And realistically, that's what he'll do. Like if I don't attack with him, he'll just go outburst. And then if he has Tide Binder the next turn, he'll just hold up Tide Binder forever, you know, or until I attack with it, you know. So it's like I can. Um, but then again, like Kavu's a 5-5, five, five, so it can be good defensively. It's just like I'm not applying any pressure by just having Kavu on board. If I had other creatures on board, then it's different. Like if I had like Scion or something where then maybe it's different and I can still apply pressure each turn. But uh, I didn't have that. So, um, you know, I think I had to force him to have it. You know, most lists aren't playing four tie binders. They're playing um, three tie binders, two, two to three. I think three is maybe standard. Maybe they are playing four now. I'm not sure without Fury. But um the other thing is that he, in that situation, if he, my thought was, even if he had gone outburst, he can double block, but then I think I had a bolt. I had one mana open and bolt, so I could basically trade my Kavu plus bolt, you know, for his Rhino. So it's, like, not the worst trade. Um, so, you know, my thought process there was, like, well, if he has, I'm just forcing him to have it. Like, even if he has outburst, I'll kill both his Rhinos, and then we'll, we can play some more magic. But uh, maybe, maybe that wasn't the correct play, because it's, like, well, his chance of having outburst or tie binder is high, but I thought the outburst play would have been a good exchange like i will trade a kabu for and a bolt for two rhinos which seems bad uh you know because you're like oh card disadvantage things like that but like in this matchup like you just have to force them to have more cascade spells like you deal with the rhinos as they come and you try to just outgrind them eventually you know so yeah um we had stub for the first rhinos um so i think maybe that is common for for rhinos play board out force negation um which is fine uh but you know, we just got kind of hosed by multiple tie binder, multiple subtlety, and flame manor. So he kind of saw those like one, like he's probably has like two flame manor as a deck. So he saw kind of like the the you know some of the the cards that are very good in this matchup, which makes sense. He probably boarded out some of the bad cards. But all right, well, uh, tough tough days so far today. We're o two. I, I felt like I've played pretty well. Um, again, we had that maybe that punt in game one, but it was like so close. Um, you know, of round one. So I, I think that's kind of like the thing where we're at right now. But uh, yeah. Hopefully we can rally to uh um to two two maybe get some play points back. We'll we'll have to see. All right, well I'll see you guys for round three. Okay, I'm back for round uh three. Hopefully we can get a win here because uh, we've had some tough losses today. Um uh we're on the draw. I think this hand's fine. It's not amazing on the draw, but there should be less bowmaster decks, so and we'll see if we use a run six deck. Um on it might wait till second main. Pass priority in. Okay, probably Merc Tide. We're going to be happy to uh, just play a Ragavan here. That was good, too. I know he has no... Again, we don't know exactly what he's on. He could be on different things. Could be, like, the Wizard deck or something. But we're just assuming he's on Merktide for now. So we know he has no Ragavan. Um, maybe he didn't have a second land, and that's why he did that. If he has a DRC here, you would play DRC first. Okay, basic mount's interesting. So it's just Prout. Oh, this deck. Okay, so he's on, like, the Twiddlestorm deck, I'm pretty sure. Which uh, might be hard to beat. I have to be very careful about untapping. Um, but if Ragman can connect, he might have a bolt. If Ragman can connect, then we can play Kabu and hold up Stub, which is a pretty good spot to be in. So this land first. See if Monkey connects. Seems like he will. 
All right, we're in a good spot now. Escape bluffs. Okay, I'm assuming he's on the Twiddle deck because I think that's what the one that plays here. Searing, Searing Visions. So we're gonna jam Kabu here and then hold up Stub and just like try to win that way. I think we're in a very good position. I mean, of course, we're good against decks that just like don't interact at all. Although not really against Amulet Titan, so I guess it depends on the deck. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna stub this. That was he setting up for something. He goes Breach or something. I guess he doesn't. He's not gonna do that. So they just had need to wa watch out for the One Ring. Obviously setting up for something. There's the Lotus Field. Yeah, so he's the lowest field combo. So if I just counter the Lotus uh, Bloom, just to spend three, so I don't think there's a world where he's actually going to live long enough to be able to cast it, then I should be good. I think I'm going to just take a lot of damage here. I don't care. I don't think I need to loot. I think I'm going to exile from his graveyard. I don't really need to do anything, actually. Hands amazing. That nine. Um, I don't think he would play, like, Supreme Verdict or something weird like that. So what would be enough for lethal? I'll probably just play Brawler. I could have a Bolt. I just think about my sequencing here. You destroy both of these treasures. You have, like, some way to do that. We'll just play Brawler. I don't think I really have a reason to do anything else. I guess against a Bolt, he could... He wouldn't... He, I'm not showing he has Bolt. Bolt here, he'll take 7, so he won't actually be dead. And then we'll see if I get, like, punished for what I'm doing. I mean, he's gonna go Ring next turn, and I stub it, and then it's game over. Or this turn now. Okay, where he'll just concede, sir. Alright, so this is not one that's on my sideboard guide. Uh, I think we want Reprieve, for sure. We probably want Flusters. We want Terra Sunder for Ring. I don't know if... I don't think I'm gonna attack it with Rest in Peace. He has different ways of doing his combo. Bolt's going to be pretty useless because he doesn't have uh, a lot of stuff. Travel Flames could still be fine, but since we're bringing extra interaction, maybe I just want to keep some threats in. Uh, do I need Preordain? I guess it allows me to dig for stuff. Two, three. I don't know what to cut on now. Brawler, maybe? He does play Bolt, so let's we'll cut two Brawlers just because of that. I'm assuming he plays Bolt. Most of these ones do. Um, I think we keep this. We have the stubs. Obviously, it's a little clunky. Hopefully, we draw a fetch land, but I think this is a good hand. We don't draw a land, so I think we have to go Zagoth here. Like, we could play Ragavan, but if he bolts me, then, like, I'm doing nothing, and that's so bad. So, I think we just have to do this. And we might even, next turn, we might even double spell, or just play Ragavan plus Stub. I'm going to just play Kabu, actually. Maybe Fluttstorm's not good. Like, but how does this combo work? Oh, because it, it, it won't counter the actual Ice Me? Like, what, what is your plan here, guy? Uh, I think we will discard here. I don't know what, though. I need a land. I need land pretty bad, actually. I'm going to discard this Nakatl. Get a land. Not exactly the land we want, though. Drops better than no land, though. I need to hold up blue mana, so... Okay. Can try to ice me or something? Like, what is your move here, dude? I'm gonna try to ice me and play ring. Kill this with a thing that does the stuff. Um, I think I'm fine with this. Like, he'll draw cards, but I just need to counter ring. I don't think it's worth... It's just a little awkward now because of that basic planes. It's not really as good because I can't apply more pressure, so... What the fuck are you playing? What is this? What is this? What the fuck is this? All right, he's just on some, like, jank combo. It, it's not the Twiddle Ring deck. He's on Dragon Storm. I respect. Not really. I don't respect it at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, we still can't play Brawler, so I think we... Hmm, we just loot away Kabu. Nah, I think we loot away Brawler here. We loot away one of our permission spells, but I don't think that's correct. We've got land, sweet. And... Okay, so let's just make sure we have Green Blue here uh, in the deck. We do, Breeding Pool. I really need it. No, I do need to play second Kabu because I, I need a clock. Again, I think this is fine. He's drawing to something, but I don't think if I hold up stub, I should be okay. I could be wrong. I have binding too. I don't know what his combo exactly is, so that's like the dangerous game I'm playing. And like he could just be ramping into like uh, a lot of different things. So like, I could bind that treasure token, but I don't know what he's trying to do. So maybe that's maybe that would have been smart though. Okay, that was I don't I don't know I, I don't know what my opponent my opponent is playing a Lotus Field deck, but he has Dragon Storm as his win con. So I I don't I don't know Lotus Field, but I guess he didn't draw a ring. He didn't draw anything, you know, not, not very exciting match. Uh, we, we won. I mean, we're in the O2 bracket, so, you know, we won a game. I guess I'll accept th that victory and then uh, we'll be on for round. Was that four? Yeah, four. So I hope we can get 2-2 two, two and, and, and make some money or something. Or at least uh, get go back to even, right? Because I can get uh, this cost me. I mean, EV is probably roughly even because like, this cost me 200 play points. So but I get. 10 QPs if I win another game, which is probably slightly better EV, but it kind of depends if you map value the QPs or whatever. But anyway, uh, I'll see you guys for round uh, whatever it is, four. Um, okay, I am back for round four. We're one, two, which is not very good. Uh, let's see if we can get another win here. I can at least get some play points back, some QPs or whatever. Um, we'll see how we do. I don't, I don't know if my playing has been amazing. Okay, we've got the, we haven't had a mulligan a lot today. So we definitely, uh, that hurts us a bit. Uh, one lander. So I, I think I want to go to five here. I don't think I keep this. Uh, we do keep this. That we're gonna keep. Uh, put back. So we're likely to go turn one Nakatl, turn two. So I think we like bolt. And we put back tribal flames preordain. I think that's what we're gonna go with here. 
And I don't know what my opponent's on. My idea here is in case they go like turn one mana dork or something, then I have the bolt to answer it. They play basic forest, and they are going to go turn one mana dork and halfling. So it's probably Yawgmoth. It could be something else, but it should be a relatively straightforward play. We draw another Kabu, which is fine. I'm guessing this is Yogg, but it could also feasibly be something else. It could be like Omnath, but basic forest is kind of weird, so it's probably Yogg. We can't let that live. And then what does Jamkabu turn to, most likely? Yeah, Yogmoth. Hierarch. Um, hmm. Okay, so the question is, do I want to kill the Hierarch? You go Yogmoth next turn, that's going to be a problem. So I think, I don't know, you could put, say I'm playing too conservatively, but I think I'm going to just do this and then play Nakadal. It's like, obviously he has Grist, he has Grist or whatever, but I'm going to just have to try to slow him down a little bit. If I didn't have Nakadal here, I would have just jammed Kabu, but... This also makes his Grist worse. He can't like sack the Hierarch and then kill my Kabu or something with Grist. So not an amazing start, but I mean, maybe he's choked on mana. There's a world. We bolted both his things. I think that was correct with with having a Kabu because now we can get some pressure on board. Maybe he just has nothing. Only three drops in hand and no land. Uh, oh, he plays Dried Arbor from hand. Interesting. I mean, I'm, I kind of want to bolt Dried Arbor, but that, that, that can't be right. Like, if he just draws a land, I look like an idiot, right? Because the problem is I'm not applying much pressure if I don't bolt Dried Arbor. Like, what's he likely going to do? Just play? <laughs> we're, we're just going to do it. Keep him choked on lands. Three bolts. Not applying much pressure here. But they're okay. So he gets the third land, finally. That was the downside of that line. Plays Grist, as expected. Probably takes it up. He has to take it up. So now it's going to be hard to fight over. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't supposed to bolt. Because, like, if I had the bolt, I could have. Um, I think we're going to attack Grist. I think that's the correct line here. Just to fight over his current board. Force the block here. Where he cannot block. No, yeah, he's got to block. All right. I think we're in an okay position. Maybe. We'll see. He has to draw another land. He did. Okay. So now he can get Yawgmoth, I guess. But he can't really do much. Oh, now he can, I guess. Okay. So he he drew well there. And he drew two more lands, I guess. Or maybe I just played it poorly. But I don't have a way to deal with Yawgmoth. So I thought it was smarter to fight over the mana dorks. Then. Um, do whatever. Somehow Hepatra got into the graveyard. Uh, oh, I guess he... Okay. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. I think we're going to try to get a... Savi Trium, in case we get a binding, a little double spell. Like now we're kind of in trouble, right? Because I attack at Grist, he just blocks it. I think I just attack Grist here. He force him to block. Not amazing play to do. Oh, he could also sack to not so Grist doesn't die. That's pretty bad. I think I also need to away this Trium. I mean we just attack Grist here. I can't have Grist live. Of course you can shrink Kabu, make him smaller, things like that, but live with it. And we really need to find an answer for the Yoggers for binding or something. Again, he can sack here, shrink him to a 4 4. We got Kabu's for days. That was to be expected. Of course, we're not still in, still in an amazing spot, but at least he can't, like, unless he has another one drop in hand, he can't, like, sack it to make Grist. So I don't, I think I played this correct. You could argue the only thing that was maybe loose was, like, bolting the dryad, but I think at that point, like, if I let him untap, you know, I'm going to try to keep him choked on lands. I think that was correct. I don't have an answer to Yawgmoth. And, like, playing Kabu is so bad into just Grist, sack dryad, kill Kabu, and I look like an idiot. So. All right, well, now he has other creatures, so now we're kind of in trouble. Probably going to try to cord here, I suppose. Preordain. I think we preordain first. Could have Bowmaster. I don't care. I need to deal with the Ogmoth. Could just try to go now. Cord for Bowmaster. Cord for Blood Artist, and I lose. I don't think I could have played around this. Like, he, if he gets Blood Artist, he doesn't have a dying spell. So, we'll see. I mean, if he gets Bowmaster, that's, like, not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Try to kill it. I think this is okay. Like, that's awful. That was so bad. That... Uh, okay. Okay. Do we try to kill Grist at this point, or do we just deal damage to face? I also notably don't have green mana now, so I can't even cast anything in my hand. All right, so I guess we're just going to loot loot. Maybe I don't care about Grist with Abu on board. Hmm. Go face. No, I'm going to kill Grist. Although it's just going to be a lot of damage into Grist, so he could, like, chump chump. And Grist is going to save him. What if I attack face, right? So, I, I don't know. Blo he just, like, chump chump. I'm fine with that, though. This is actually bad, though, because if I, I have to find an answer to Yogg, but I grow his army token and allow him to ping more. So... I don't know. I don't know how I win this game. Exile Yogg. Exile the Patra. I, I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Like, I mean, I can't let him unt untap with Grist and Yogmoth. Let like Grist take three, which is kind of unexpected. He's going to sack some more. Maybe I was supposed to attack face there, but I don't think so. I just need to kind of pray that he has nothing. Hmm. I don't know. That, that one was close. Maybe I was supposed to just loot anyway and be like, I need to find an answer to Yogmoth and grow the Bowmasters. I don't think that's amazing. Children, board again. You need a binding. But well, Master is good specifically in this situation with two Kabus on board. But I, I still think it was correct to priority in there. What, he's going to get, like, Young Wolf or something so he can sack it to Grist? I hear he made a token. Now am I dead? I really would like a Binding or a Tribal Flames um, or whatever. He's going to shrink all my creatures. Oh, is he going to try Proliferate here? He has enough mana to do it. We need another land. He's trying to find another land, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about these attacks. This game I'm kind of uncertain about if I played it correctly. 
Um, I think I needed to dig for an answer to Moth, but I don't think growing the Bowmaster and killing my whole board was worth doing that, but I could be wrong. Now we're just going to lose anyway. But he had Grist on board and a lot of creatures, so he might have been able to fight through it even if I dealt with his Moth. Oh, now he can proliferate. I'm annoying. Need a Binding. Dub's not that useful here. Actually, it's extremely unuseful. Um, yeah, I mean, we're back in the same boat. Like, what do I attack with my 3-3? Three, three? How do I win this? Like, I want to loot, but I don't want to give him more stuff. Maybe I should loot. Maybe I should have looted. I don't know how I'm winning this. Let's just keep playing creatures. Maybe I shouldn't even care about Chris. I should have just been attacking face this whole time, but I don't think that's right. I mean, he's going for it, but if I had a bolt, I would blow him out. So he probably has another Yogg in hand. I don't know. I don't know how I win this game at this point. I'm going to keep paying life. It'd be funny if I just had, like, Tribal Flames killed him. Tribal Flames was bolt. I just killed him right now. I guess I'll have to do this. A little clunky mana. Again, we're letting him untap with the Ogmoth and Gris, so like I don't think we win this, but you know, it is what it is. You can say maybe I again I could have tried looted more, but I need to find exactly binding, and I'm like growing his bowmaster and aligning to kill creatures, so not really a winning strategy, I don't think. Now he could just cord for blood artist. He has like a million creatures, Jesus. Yeah, so now he's just gonna cord for blood artist to get the win. So maybe I did tap out. I think I had to play creature there. Like what I just I don't even have stub turned on right now. Okay, I mean, I, it's turn eight. Um, obviously, I could have played it differently. Um, I didn't have enough early pressure, but like he also had like three mana dorks, and I tried to choke him out of mana, and it didn't work out. He drew two lands when he needed them, so I think I'm fine with that. That's how I played it. So yeah, he obviously had Grist or Yogg the whole time. I attacked his mana. It didn't play out as I needed it, but I did have the Coddle on board applying pressure, so I, I think it was correct. Like, forced him to lit. I think he must have drawn like three lands in a row when he needed them. Otherwise, he was literally just going to be stuck at two lands, not doing anything. And, like, allowing those creatures to live would also allow him to Grist and then uptick or something, you know, and, like, start the Grist engine. And that's why I ultimately lost to, really. Like, yes, I lost to Yogg, but I actually lost to Grist, just absorbing so much damage. So maybe you can argue I should have, like, attacked him, and that's on me. But at the same time, I don't think letting him just, like, untap with Grist. Like, I didn't have lethal. I can just let him untap with Grist, and he can just do a million things. So I need. I thought I needed to deal with Grist. But maybe with Yogg and Grist on board, I just ignore Grist at that point and just attack him, do damage um I'm, I'm not sure because I, I did end up like directing a ton of damage at grist but at the end of the day he did chump it anyway and he could have just chumped it here too so i at least forced the chumps because he needed grist alive but it's hard, hard to say if that was correct i could see a world where you're just like i ignore grist attack face force him to chump uh anyway and if he doesn't chump then he's taking a lot of damage and going low on life and then he's like less inclined to use yawk moth i think that could have been a better approach but it's like really close I don't think it's correct to just ignore, uh, you know, ignore the mana dorks. I think he just, then he just goes off. And like, obviously, if we had a Scion or if we had Brawler earlier instead of the Kabus, he wouldn't have been able to chomp and keep Grist alive. So, Yogmoth, we're going to take out our stubs. They're pretty dead in the matchup. Bring in six cards. Rest in peace, rest in peace, reprieve, reprieve, chain of the rocks, chain of the rocks. And uh, we could also cut, maybe I cut the preordains. What do I cut here usually? No, I close out my cyborg guide. Um, I think Ragavans are bad. It's a Bowmaster, but they also have like Young Wolf. So I think this is usually what I do. He preordains in to dig for answers. I'm going to play Ragavans better, but it's just bad against a Bowmaster Young Wolf deck. Deep. This is nice because I can potentially just, like, if he goes Mana Dork turn one, I can bolt it. And if not, I can go uh, Scion turn two. This is a Visage, which is amazing. But there's also an argument that actually, I, I think I'll probably go Kabu turn two, um, regardless, potentially. And then, uh, well, obviously, if we bolt turn one, then we bolt turn one. It plays Young Wolf, so can't do that line. I think I'm going to just play Kabu because I'm worried about uh, Seiju. So we get another land, too, so it's nice. But I think of what I'm going to end up getting. Probably a red source, so... So if he goes um, the wall thing, then I probably will chain the wall. It looks like he's not doing that, though. He's going to play another Young Wolf. Okay. So this is your approach. Let's see how this plays out for you. Hmm. So we get binding here, so... But I think what we want to do... I want to get red-white. So I think we're going to start with Zion, attack for five, and then maybe chained a young wolf, depending on what he does here. A double block. I'm trying to think if it makes sense to chain before or after the turn. He's most likely to go Grist. Hmm. Right, so he goes Grist. No, wait, he can't go Grist. He doesn't have the lands to do it. Okay, I think I'm just going to just do it after the turn. Actually, I'll just do it before. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think of what, what difference it would make. We're going to get red white here. Do I even care about these young wolves? I think I do. And we have binding too. So I think I'm going to just chain one of these and then. Maybe I'm, I'm not supposed to care about these, though. Right, because, like, he's probably has um else in hand. All right, cool. Ended up working out. So he probably just, like, didn't have anything. Uh, Okay, not much of a game there. Try game three. Again, so he kept a one-lander. It must have been a very good one-lander. Like, I'm guessing he had um uh the Wall of Roots in it, and he was like, oh, I'll just draw a second land, and he just didn't 
Hand is good. We can go Nakato turn one uh, if we are afraid of Bowmaster. Um, we don't have an answer to turn one, you know, whatever. Turn one dork, but, you know, you can't always get what you want. Staying move. So we're going to stick with our plan of um, Nakato turn one in case of Bowmaster. I don't want to just play Ragman into Bowmaster. So what would he probably keep? Wall of Roots is likely. I think the only thing that makes sense in this hand because he doesn't have any one drop. So he probably just has Wall of Roots and then like Wrist and like some other stuff. So we could potentially chain the Wall of Roots and then um, that's not amazing though. We have decision point here, right? So if I don't, I guess for a second. So our options are, is he my black mana right now? So I could just play a Ragavan and chain this. He, he's probably going to play Grist. Uh, but if I reprieve Grist and he just has Wall of Roots on board, I'm not really advancing my board at all. If I dash Ragavan, he's going to block with Wall of Roots. He's going to take three. Can't double spell. Oh, I can with with Binding plus Ragavan. I think that's fine. I, or Chain plus Ragavan. I think I'm happy to do that, actually. Doesn't seem like the strongest line. Like, he can go Gris next turn, but I have answers for it. And then I want to get more pressure on board. But I guess this is weak against, like, if he specifically goes Gris next turn as a token on board, it's not amazing for me, right? But he's not black mana, so he's not showing any one drops. I think I'm going to fight over this. You could also argue to try to, like, bind uh, because of the mana efficiency. Like, Ragman's not that good in this matchup, but, uh, like, I could have bind there. I guess, like, chain, but binds instant speed, and I think that's probably more important. <laughs> Very effective. Uh, I think I'm happy to trade a Nakato for a rat. Like, is he going to trade this? Like, I think I'm fine with that. I think I'm just going to go... I just want to go Nakato and hold up Reprieve. Okay. Okay, so how do we sequence this? We blew up the land. So we can get a... All right, let's go with green white. So, sorry, I'm just thinking for a second. This is annoying because now he's going to prevent the damage. All right, I have no way to stop him from doing this. Like, this is actually really annoying. I guess I could have played around Besaju, but I don't think that's right to do. Okay. So my options are find... It was awkward. I shouldn't have gotten this land. That was a mistake. Because now I can't double spell. Yeah, I want to get another Nakato on board. Uh, yeah, because I could have figured out a way to what? Could I have done this? I could have maybe had, instead of getting... No, I had Green White as my other land. So I could have gotten, like, Zagoth. I, I didn't have a good way to do it, because Green and White are on the same here. Yeah. No, I got the wrong I got the wrong land. Now I have to bind the Wall of Roots. Wait, wait. No, I, I have five types. I can do this, right? No, I don't blue. No, I do have five types. Okay, okay. We're overthinking this. So we can bind Wall of Roots, play Nakato. Okay, okay, it ended up being smart, what I was trying to do. Yeah, does he have Force of Vigor? Like, pitch his whole hand? <laughs> Alright, all right, we're fighting over the Wall of Roots. I think this is okay, though. And I have Reprieve. If he lets you untap at all, I just need him, like, Brick on land. Actually, I have Tribal Flames, even if he doesn't Brick, so I don't care. Alright, now we're in very good shape. Um, we could actually do it all here, and, like, Tribal Flames is dry. I, I, I think I'm fine with this trade. There's no world where he's going to trade it, so... Unless he has literally another Besaju. I'll live with, I guess. I'll just Tribal Flames is same thing. Second Besaju. Oh, endurance maybe uh i could reprieve in endurance oh he doesn't go for it uh i think we do i need tribal flames right now i don't think so i could but i'm at three wait let's see what's the worst he does besaju gets wall of roots back then hmm, besaju gets wall of roots back and then goes like grist that i reprieve do i care that much about it i think so if i have the mana to do it i'm gonna do it so he must have another besaju okay we got there uh we fought over his he kept some clunky hands like a no black mana so I just decided to fight over his wall of roots because clearly that was like part of his plan of doing something. I don't really know. He didn't have black mana, but he obviously wanted it back. So um, I found, you know, again, the last matchup, if he, I, I found it worth it to fight over these early mana dorks. So like you can say that, oh, like what, you're wasting this on wall of roots. Why not use it on Yawgmoth? But like if he gets Yawgmoth in play, sometimes he can already get enough value where it doesn't matter. So I think sometimes it is worth like I do like Chain of the Rocks in this matchup. Obviously, I like Reprieve too. Like even if he drew a land here, and tries to go like grist or something or i don't know what he tries to go i just reprieve it and we win the game so it ended up working out this game uh last game obviously not so much so but i think this kind of shows the strength of like chain of the rocks like yes it was bad in the sense that he got his thing back and it would be nice if i could just not have gotten it back but at the same time it's like a one mana answer to anything any creature in his deck and he's a creature combo deck so like he had to use a besaju it ramp my mana um and you know ended up being fine so anyway we got there 2-2 two, two. uh how do i feel about my playing today and the list overall so let's go look at the list again um i think my playing again against amulet titan i had that punt and like that was just game one and you know maybe that would have really affected the outcome i'm not sure uh, i could have stopped my opponent from drawing more and he ended up drawing the colossus so i, I think you know maybe this is a 3-1 if if i you know play that sequence how i initially wanted to which was basically like abu plus binding on that one turn to take his ring to stop him from drawing more, and then he just keeps bricking. He had Besaju in hand, so he could have Besaju'd, but 
you know, it's doing, I, I don't know. I didn't think it was the strongest play anyway, because in that case, it, you know, if you recall, it was, he had Besaju in hand and he, I think he had Besaju Mano up. So it's like, I bind it. He Besaju's right away. I guess I don't even get anything out of that. So, you know what? I, I think that wouldn't have been an amazing line. I think holding on to the binding for like, okay, if he goes Titan, I need to do this. Cause I know he has Besaju in hand already. Um, and maybe he like sequence, he like mistakenly sequences something like he plays the Besaju or I, I think maybe that was a better call. Otherwise, like, because if I play Binding there, he just besages it right away. I get a land out of it, but I don't get anything else. Um, so, but maybe, you know, besaging a, a Titan isn't amazing either. So I was hoping to kind of catch him making a mistake. Um, so I don't know. It was iffy. Anyway, how do I feel about the list? Uh, I like I like the 60. Uh, the one thing I'm considering now with um, Rhinos playing Tidebinder and, like, kind of the shift of just, like, I think there's going to be a lot of Rhinos, a lot of Living End, is, like, I'm tempted to just go back to Two Teferi uh, Time Raveler in this slot. I used to play Teferi a lot. He can be okay. Um, he's obviously good against Cascade and things. Like, there are other good answers to Cascade. Like, look, we have Fluster. We have Reprieve, things like that. Um, but I found that, like, Hidetsugu, okay, you're in theory, it's good against Hammer Time. It's good against uh, Scales. It's good against Rhinos. But the past few matches, I've when I've been testing it, uh, like, I think it's now worse against Rhinos because you have Tidebinders. Tidebinders are already good against us. Why? Because we have Kabu. So you're now playing... Uh, oh, and we have Binding. So Tide Binder already hits eight of our cards. So you're bringing in like Hitetsugu, the Tide Binder also hits. So it used to be just like, if you're playing Hitetsugu, you just got to worry about Force Negation. Uh, but now it's like, okay, you have to worry about Force Negation and Tide Binder, but Tide Binder is also so good against us. So I talked to the Rhinos player said he cuts Force Negation. I think that might be true for some decks. Uh, and that would mean that things like Teferi are then good again, because that's just, he has less answers to Teferi. Basically his only answer to Teferi probably is uh, Subtlety. So, um, and of course like Fluster Storm's good uh reprieve is good if he's not playing you know things like that reprieve is also good against tie binder so uh but i played against scales as well and scales like hitetsugu in theory is great but the problem with hitetsugu is a lot of their good creatures like their win con creatures are two mana so what can happen is like you're like oh man i'm holding on to hitetsugu and then they just play like two mana their two mana spells and that's really what you want to kill so Teferi, obviously, I think is pretty dead against Hardened Scales. I don't think you're supposed to like bring it in. I guess you could use it to like bounce a thing back to hand, um, which is maybe useful. I don't know. Um, they don't do a ton at instant speed. That's like, uh, you know, playing spells. So uh, although Teferi can bounce an Urza Saga, and that's actually pretty useful. So maybe Teferi is like decent in that matchup, um, especially when they're like trying to go turn to Urza Saga and you can kind of like bounce it, time walk them, things like that. So I, I, I think that's fine. Like I think Teferi can be decent against Saga matchups. And I think... Like the bounce is useful enough, maybe against uh scales. I have to, t I'd have to test it, but that's what I'm trying to. And I'm kind of rambling here, but I'm considering now just going to Teferi instead of Hedetsugu. And like you can even bring in Teferi against Hammer Time again for Urza Saga and also like turning off their protection spells, things like that. So it's not the worst. It's not as good as Hedetsugu against Hammer, but it's not bad. But because I've just kind of been underwhelmed, I used to like this card a lot and it's great when you get the blowouts, but I've just found it's like it's been underwhelming the past few times I've had it in hand, like past matches and stuff it's just kind of died in hand or it's like my opponent never overcommits with rhinos like we saw and then i just like am in an awkward position so i'm kind of tempted to just go to fairy with this like tide binder in the meta and and go from there um so i think that's gonna be the one change i'm gonna test out moving forward but anyway we end up with a 2-2 not great uh i thought my playing was okay um let me know in the comments if you would have played stuff differently what you think overall the deck and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching